In the last video, we talked about the four properties that define a Hilbert space. In this video, we'll be looking at two types of Hilbert spaces that are important in quantum mechanics. The first type is the finite dimensional Hilbert space. Examples of these vector spaces are Rn and Cn, where Cn is the set of n tuples of complex numbers and Rn is the set of n tuples of real numbers. They're finite dimensional because the number of vectors necessary to form a basis in these vector spaces is finite. For both Rn and Cn, there are only n basis vectors in these vector spaces. Now, just like any Hilbert space, we need to have a well-defined inner product. The inner product on Rn is the typical dot product you're probably well acquainted with from first year linear algebra. So if x1 is a vector consisting of elements from a1 to an, and x2 is a vector consisting of elements b1 to bn, then the inner product of x1 and x2, which can also be written as x1 transpose times x2, is just a1 b1 plus a2 b2 all the way to an bn. The inner product on cn is the complex inner product, so if we have two vectors z1 and z2, where z1 is a vector consisting of elements from a1 plus b1i, to an plus bni, and z2 is another vector consisting of elements from c1 plus d1i to cn plus dni, where i squared equals negative 1 is the imaginary number, then their inner product is very similar to the inner product for real numbers, except instead of just the transpose of the first vector, we're using the conjugate transpose. That is, we're taking the conjugate of every element in z1, and then the transpose of the resulting conjugate vector. The second type of Hilbert spaces are infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces. An example of this is the vector space of complex valued functions, which has the following inner product, where the inner product of two functions, psi and phi, is given by the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the conjugate of psi times phi dx. Because of this inner product, we can't just use any functions in our function space. We have to use a special class of functions called square integrable functions. And here's why we need square integrable functions. Say we pick e to the power x and e to the power 2x as our two functions, and take their inner product according to this integral rule. If we do that, then clearly we're going to end up with infinity, because e to the power x and e to the power 2x don't converge as x approaches infinity. They diverge. But if we get infinity, then that means our inner product doesn't exist, and we can't have that. This is why we need our Hilbert space to consist of the set of square integrable functions, because square integrable functions psi are defined as those for which the following integral, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the absolute value of psi squared dx, is finite. Now if we take the inner product of two square integrable functions, then because this integral is finite, then the inner product as a result will exist and also be finite. It turns out that for quantum mechanics, the square integrable functions are also normalized, which means that this integral equals 1. This is part of the normalization condition that you'll see later on. Anyway, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to dig deeper into the mathematical basis of quantum mechanics, and we're going to discuss Dirac notation.